the one. We found it. That's the spot. We hit it. We quit it. Don't quit it. This is the beginning of the show. Don't quit it yet. We've got a lot more to go, and it's the show that we do every week. Hey, it's Sonic Weekly. Uh, thank you so much to our singer, me, uh, Grant. Hello. We do this show once every week or so, four times a month for sure. Comes out every seven days. Sometimes it's like, whoa, that was a quick week. Another episode of Sonic Weekly already. Other times it's like, man, where's my new episode of Sonic Weekly? It's been over seven days. They usually say seven days. Well, you know, it goes, it ebbs and it flows. There's slopes. We talk about Sonic the Hedgehog here on this show and other things too. Uh, with us here is Bo. Hi, Bo. Here we go, buddy. Hey, I didn't know Gerald Robotnik was the guest on today's episode, but uh, glad to have him. <laughs> you would, all of you are grateful. But you know what we're grateful for is the star of the show, out of the shadows, into the spotlight, David the Lurker. Hi, David. Oh, hi, Grant. Hi, Bo. Hello. Hello. Wow. Right. You were mentioning slopes. That's what Sonic likes to play with. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You know, he likes to roll down them on occasion. And I had something else. I was like, wow, I've got a zinger and it's already gone. I guess quite like Sonic the Hedgehog likes to go up over and gone. So that's right. That's the magic of live podcasting. (laughs) Yeah, it was there, but it's gone. It was there. All right. That's yeah. because I was distracted by these photographs of the Sonic the Hedgehog trophy from 1993. <laughs> oh. And I was like, oh, wow, that is so cool. I want it, but they'll never give it to me. Why wouldn't they? I've never been in a Formula One race. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I see. You're on the uh, SonicStadium.org slash news here on the date of March 21st at 623 Pacific Time PM. And you're seeing that one of the top news stories is that McLaren shares new photos of the iconic F1 1993 Sonic the Hedgehog trophy. Yes. Is that what you're looking at? That, that is what I was looking at. Okay. And, I, and it, I'm like, it's a great trophy. I'm glad it still exists. Mm-hmm. They've tweeted about it before. Like, hey, we own it. We have it. It didn't get destroyed because there were a lot of people who thought, hey, maybe it got destroyed. Like it was just a one off thing. It was immediately thrown in the trash. But yeah, it survived and it. It looks it's all in one piece and it is pretty cool. But the fact that that is a top story on Sonic Stadium, I think, tells you (laughs) there's like no news, like nothing. No news. No news. We're waiting (laughs) for some news. That is Mm -hmm. Sonic X Shadow Generations. We know nothing. No. What about uh, Sonic Movie 3? We don't know. No. What about uh, is there anything after Sonic Prime? I I don't know. We don't know. Nobody knows. What about old news? We specialize in old news, right, Bo? How there is there any new old news? Oh, we got we got breaking news from 1995. Ah, uh, my so favorite classic Sega game, Shinobi Legions, aka Shinobi X, in uh, the European regions. This game, not anybody's favorite in the Shinobi series. I'm sure somebody played it with their brother growing up and thought, "Hey, I, yeah, I, lo- I love that game." But you know what? what's not known about that game is how to access its debug mode. And the reason why nobody figured that out in 29 years is that you have to go to the options menu and change the sound test and the music test to certain values. You got to hold the L button. And you got to put in 40 other buttons in the right order. Oh, my God. And then you got to start the game and press start and hold R. And then it pops right up. <laughs> uh, so... <laughs> That's all you have to do. That's all, it's so simple. all you got to do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's it's weird that nobody stumbled upon that, but it is really cool. And if you're not good at the Shinobi games like me, or me, you can turn on Infinite Lives and uh, <laughs> you can get through it. Okay. If I had only had this in 1995, you know, I actually wasn't playing Shinobi Allegiance in 1995. I was probably more likely playing Revenge of Shinobi on the six pack, the Mega Drive six pack, it's the Genesis six pack. Yeah. Right, right. And uh, never finish that either because it's it's really hard. It is hard. And I don't know if I have enough skill to put in that code. <laughs> it's actually kind of difficult. So for, yeah. for Rings of Saturn, I made a patch that just enables it out of the box. You don't have to go put oh. in the code. So Oh, thank God. But that's today's Rings of Saturn. And you know, next week, I, I got a couple of things I could potentially finish up. But I think the one I'm going to do is a, a, a weird little game wasn't published in the North America. It did come out in Europe. 1997's Swagman. By <laughs> oh, 
Swagman. Yeah. That's what oh, they everyone call Everyone knows about Swagman. Yeah, from the, from the makers of <laughs> Tomb Raider, Core Design. Wow. They were hot off the success of you know Lara Croft, and they thought, what what's next? We're going to do Swagman, which is it's kind of like a a, a Metroid style of gameplay where you or like a Resident Evil where you're kind of like okay, I start here and I got to get this item to unlock this door, which means I can go back to the place I was before and get this flashlight and now I can open the thing and then you know that kind of game. Right. Right. Anyway, came out on the PlayStation, came out on the Saturn near Europe. Not a lot of uh Swagman fans out there. I couldn't find the Swagman Discord server. But, you know, there's a guy who grew up watching his brother play in that game. <laughs> I'm really going to make his week next week on Rings of Saturn. If you are that person, reach out. We'd love to hear from you. Sonic Weekly Podcast at gmail.com. Yeah, if you are a Swagman fan, I definitely want to talk to you. <laughs> I'm very curious. Uh, what a name, Swagman. Lara Croft or Lara Croft? You know, I thought if I said it quickly, nobody would notice, but you called I'm me sorry. right out. I'm sorry. Uh, there, was another, there was another funny sort of Midwestern pronunciation in there, too, that I, I could jump on that because it's just I... It's I'm being from the Midwest. You sort of hear it. Oh, well, now I'm curious. Something perks up hairs in your ear. Debug. Oh, debug. Uh, it's me. Sheet code debug. Uh, <laughs> I am uh, wealthy, aristocratic. Uh, how you say uh, French? Uh, <laughs> See, I would distinguish uh, Antoine. We... Debug the verb from debug the noun. But oh, OK. Yeah. Debug. It's like record and record. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know what I'm talking about at all. But hey, you don't only play old games. In fact, you're playing a new game at a faster rate than David and I, who are being slow. Yeah, you uh, are you still playing Penny's Big Breakaway? Yes, and you don't know it, but my older son and you are in competition for who can get through it more quickly. So <laughs> <laughs> he's got to he's going to win. I think I think I've kind of fallen off of it. I I got to three. I think I got past the like bulls on parade. And there was another level, so maybe maybe it was whatever that is after that. I was enjoying it, but it's just sort of not where my focus has been. I'll I'll, I'll say where my focus has been after we we talk about Penny. But um, like I said, I, I I enjoyed it. I I guess maybe I wish I hadn't picked it up on Switch. Uh, I think probably it runs a little worse on Switch with a with a lower frame rate. Switch, what an amazing library, but also what an amazing library of ports that ah oh, you just wish you had on some other system yeah we've been playing the pc and it works reasonably well there now we're, we're enjoying it i like swagman i don't know if it's going to be anybody's favorite game in 30 years but there's going to be people who <laughs> remember it fondly you know he, he hands me the controller when it's a difficult part and then i got to get through it to move us on to the next part so i'm only experiencing the, the hard parts but i <laughs> i kind of dig it what stage uh what number do you know we're in world six on the boss which is a race oh. and it's not not an easy race it's not impossible but it's eluding us so far it's like a space themed level like I, I like the mechanics but i don't like the any of the color schemes on any of the levels like i like the graphics but not the look i felt that way it, i i think it's part of the reason i haven't been super enthused about playing it is i just don't love looking at it mm. I'd love to play like an, a better looking game in this engine. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. The the art direction, not like. like the, yeah, the graphical quality is fine, but right. what they've I've, chosen to render in this quality is mm -hmm. questionable. I mean, I've definitely I've seen some people make that criticism. Like, it seems like a fun game, but I just don't like the way it looks. And it, it's I mean, I guess it's a, it's a fair enough criticism. It, it is an art style that. You know, I, I it's not for everybody. I don't know. I still need to go through it. I think maybe in the next few days I'll finally take the plunge, dive into Penny. Uh, maybe maybe then I can be like, ah, oh, what is everyone like? This is the greatest game ever. Or I'll go. I'm a little confused by the story too. So okay, mm. spoilers. You were supposed to audition for the king with your yo-yo tricks. It goes poorly. Now the penguins are chasing you. Right. But like, there's a there's a part where the king confronts you, and then just you're immediately in the next level, and it's like, wait, where where did the king go? Was, oh, I, I'm mm. confused. Maybe it's like how Mania rolled out without all of the interstitial scenes at first. So <laughs> Penny's Big Breakaway Plus 
will have <laughs> Penny's big a break away from the continuity of the game. Uh-oh. <laughs> Emperor Eddie? Yep. Is that who I was yeah. I was saying Edie in my head, but I could see Eddie. Wow, this is uh, this is really a pronunciation. Yeah. yeah. Gosh, it's a whole whole different Emperor country. Emperor Swagman. Emperor Swagman. If we if we got Christian Whitehead on the show, he could tell us how it's pronounced. Although I don't know if we could actually get him on the show. The, there was some video I was suggested to on YouTube, and it was like I interviewed Christian Whitehead. I recorded the whole thing. It's like forty minutes. It was great. I saw I was this told video. I couldn't. Yeah, and he, he's like, I can't use any of the audio. They told me no, <laughs> which I think is funny. Wait, then he's he just, got like an entourage. Like, oh, I'm sorry, you can't. Um, I don't know if it was. I, I'm assuming maybe it was Private Division or you know, like the. I don't think it was Evening Star that said you can't use it. I, it was okay. somebody above, and they're like, you can't use any of the audio, but you can read the entire thing if you'd like. <laughs> Which, just, what's the point? Like, why not then just use the audio? There's nothing that says they said, oh, you can't use this, this, and this. It's you can't use the audio, but all of the or content's fine. They could have put it in print. <laughs> Maybe they did. Um, but I thought the way that they did it of a YouTube... Maybe we could do a reading. Yeah. Right. Even a podcast, frankly, would be better than a YouTube video of a guy reading, <laughs> reading. an interview. Right. Yeah. Not great. I mean, I could have pretended to be Christian Whitehead, but I probably would have done a terrible Australian accent that immediately <laughs> offended <laughs> everyone. <laughs> yeah. An entire continent. Yeah. With one bad oi, David. <laughs> <laughs> It alienated. I like going Australia. to the Outback Steakhouse. <laughs> yep. Great. Like when I'm you're good. here, you're here on in the Outback. That, that's right. That, was that their money? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Midway through, I realized that wasn't them. When you're here. You're uh, the swag man. Right. That's that's Olive Garden. Yeah. Uh, which is that is closer Sonic to the Sonic world. Yeah. I don't think they've referenced Outback Steakhouse. In anything, hey, there's time. There is time. Yeah, yeah. The bidding war for that product placement is probably heating up right now. Oh man, that's yeah. probably where Shadow wants to go because, like, you know, the Outback Steakhouse is usually a bit darker in there than in Olive Garden, so he probably likes the ambiance. He seems like somebody who would eat a lot of blooming onions. Like he'd eat the. I whole could see onion. him also really liking Denny's. It might remind him of the cafeteria on uh, uh, the Ar- Space Station Arc. Uh, where is that? So my damn omelet. Uh, <laughs> exactly yeah he likes his pancakes very hard and dry just <laughs> like they are at your very favorite denny's today's sponsor for sonic weekly right. try the moons over my hammy oh yeah moons over my hammy um you know what else you could play david what uh ambo i've been getting into a little retro gaming myself i've talked about it in the past couple of episodes but the it's really absorbed me now it's like i was like sort of submerged with the metal virus and then now i'm fully i'm fully game cubed huge recommendation for this upscaler thing that i bought called an m classic they're not a sponsor either but it's like a hundred dollars and it makes the GameCube look like the goddamn switch it looks amazing Ooh. it looks incredible it cleans up really nice the GameCube, and there's nothing more fun than being able to have a console that's new to you, which the GameCube is. And, uh, you know, I'm familiar with some of the library, but there's a lot of the library that I'm not... Now, a lot of... uh, This just started with Sonic. This was just like, okay, I need to finally play Sonic Heroes and Shadow the Hedgehog. And GameCube seems like the the best way to do that. And not to mention Sonic Riders. You never had one before? Or you had one and didn't have it? My younger brother had a GameCube. I didn't play it too much. It It was in his bedroom. So I didn't really mess around with it. And I, I was still kind of just playing the Dreamcast. And I was like, I'm just going to just ride off on into the sunset with Sega and just get every Dreamcast game that's ever existed. And that'll be how I how I cope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's where I was. I, like, I did have access to a GameCube. It was like a college roommate sort of situation. And I played uh, Smash Brothers with Sonic on it. That was, you know, a high point of those years. And before that, I... Yeah, I had the opportunity to catch up on the N64 Zelda games. They had like a three in one pack of those. Yeah, actually, two, two N64s and one not. Yep, the Master Quest. Yeah, yeah. I associate those with the GameCube because that's what I played them on. Yeah, there's been definitely like a big GameCube resurgence. I think like it was the, obviously it was not it was the 
third place console of its generation behind Xbox and certainly behind PlayStation 2. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was kind of a kiddie console, but now those kids are in their 20s and they're making YouTube videos and they're posting tweets. So there's been GameCube resurgence. But it also, because the Wii that I have is backwards compatible with GameCube, it was also just started as like a point of convenience. But unfortunately, my Wii sounds like a leaf blower (laughs) because the disk drive is old. It's not it's not the fan. I've tried it. Tried blowing the air in. It's not the fan. It's the disk drive. Ashlyn, dear wife, tried taking the thing apart with her tiny elven like goblin child minor hands to uh unscrew the tiny horrible screws that terrify me. So she did a great job, but still didn't fix the fit. So anyway, it was like, well, what if I got my own fucking GameCube? I was like, well, let's look into let's let's so you get the HDMI adapter, mm-hmm. and then you get this upscaler, mm-hmm. and this upscaler, like I said, makes it look amazing. Sonic Heroes, crisp as fuck. You know, thinking about Penny, a lot of the uh, compromise that you have to accept as a Switch owner is 30 frames per second. So to see these GameCube games running 60 frames per yeah. second <laughs> is kind of amazing. Uh, I've been playing Sonic Heroes, Shadow the Hedgehog, Star Fox Assault, and... Uh, some other games, but but mainly those four. Mainly those four. <laughs> but it's very exciting to also collect. I'm like developing a backlog because I'm like, oh shit, what are the like, what are the good games that I really would have had in 2005? So I'm like, oh, the Teen Titans game. Oh, and it's actually pretty good. Huh? Or so I'm like looking into that. Or like the NBA Street Volume Three with the Mario characters. That's right. That's awesome. Soul Calibur Two. Oh, it's like all my favorite Dreamcast games got sequels, which they did on the GameCube. Mm-hmm. You got to get on that Billy Hatcher too. Right. See what all the fuss is about. Uh, friend of the show. Is Billy Hatcher anybody's favorite game? Loaned me that because it's quite expensive. So I do have a copy mm-hmm. of Billy Hatcher in my possession that I have not played too much of yet. But I love the goddamn GameCube. I totally oh, get it. Oh, wow. So the collectors are after... They're after, yeah. Collectors are after Billy Hatcher, too? You should get the uh, the Ninja Turtle games that were on the GameCube. The ones based on the I hear those are good, show. too. Those were... I, yes. I think I only played the first two, but they're, they really scratched an itch of that beat em up sort of thing. Like, because the turtle games, you know, they, they were great in the 16 era, the eight bit era, a little bit into the 16 era. And then it just, they just vanished, you know, because also Ninja Turtles sort of went out of vogue. And then suddenly that show comes back 2003 and they made, and Konami got the license again. And it was like, yeah, it's good. Sometimes the turtles talk way too much when you're fighting, but I think that that to me is the only drawback. So I think you should put those on your list of of revisiting in that era of gaming as well. You know what, David? Do it. They're on the list. <laughs> put them on the list. Put them on the list. Okay. I got an important question to ask you because you purchased a GameCube. I don't know if you've said it elsewhere. I certainly haven't heard you say it. What color? Oh, uh, it is. What color is it? It's gray. <laughs> it's gray. But this is the second game, the second gray GameCube that I've gone through because mm-hmm. I didn't realize. Did you know? There were two different GameCube models. One has a digital video output. The other does not. Mm. So that's a pretty crucial difference. So if you get the later model GameCube, you only get the one that has the, that does not have the digital video out. Oh. Yeah. So that's what I had at first. I was like, ah, shit. So the games looked horrible. I was playing Sonic Adventure 2 and I have a screenshot of it that I'll show you guys and I'll show it in the discord, I guess, uh, if you want to see it. But it's just like it looks like dog shit. It looks horrible. It's like there's no way this is really how the game looked, even on a CRT. This this is look. Oh, it's, uh, well, it's because I'm whatever. Anyway, so sell that. Mm-hmm. Get it the proper GameCube. Now I'm in hog heaven because every day is Christmas. <laughs> I'm hearing about all these great games. Right. They're stacking up. Eternal Darkness is is on loan also from uh, a friend. and. Uh, uh, just a number of great games, but it also got me thinking about Bo and your love for the Sega Saturn and our shared love for the Sega consoles, the Sega Dreamcast. And to me, the GameCube is one of the coolest consoles, I think, even though its perception at the time was that it was the kitty console. It was the joke console. Slurs were being used <laughs> against this console <laughs> right? for daring to, but looking what I love about it is that it's not the Xbox and it's not the place. It doesn't want to do anything but play games. Even the Dreamcast, Sega Saturn and Sega CD want to be like, yeah. we're also a stereo, bro. We're also a stereo. GameCube is like, I'm a cube. I'm cute as shit. I take up so little space on your mm-hmm. on your desk even. And uh, I take tiny little discs. 
They don't work for anything else. They're so dumb. <laughs> and uh, and the controller is oddly great. You look, it looks stupid as hell. And then you play a couple games with it, and you're like, this is good. It works. I like it. Um, so I don't know exactly where I'd place it, but I wanted to open up the question of what do we think are the coolest consoles to us, and what does that even mean? Because I think the consoles that have been viewed as cool are kind of really boring. Like the PlayStation 2 is probably viewed as the coolest console. Everybody had a PlayStation 2, but because everybody had a PlayStation 2, because you kind of had it just to play DVDs and watch the extended edition of the Two Towers from the Lord of the Rings trilogy, uh, because you didn't have anything else to do, I feel like that works against it to me now. Whereas GameCube has an appeal of like, oh, you're kind of like last of a kind. You know, those like they're probably going to re-release The Wind Waker. They have re-released Metroid Prime, and it looks amazing. Resident Evil 4, every time it gets re-released or remade. I guess it, the library holds up. It's, it's, it, uh... Anyway, I want to also hook up the Dreamcast in a similar method with an upscaler and see how good Soul Calibur looks on modern screens. Dreamcast would also be a top contender for coolest. But yeah, okay, what do you guys think of that prompt? Trying to think of the consoles I had and I owned. Mm-hmm. NES, Game Gear, Genesis, Saturn, mm-hmm. Dreamcast, Game Boy Pocket, okay, GameCube, and that's it. Was the Game Boy Pocket that was like still like the normal looking Game Boy, just like a little smaller, right? A little. Sm- yeah, it was a really big upgrade in terms of portability, though. Like the the original Game Boy is like. Bit of a lunk. Yeah, it's a big battery right. life, yeah. not great. Totally. You, if you're in the sun, it's like uh, I can't see these these things. But the a pocket was like perfect size. Yeah, battery life was better. Was it was it Game Boy Color or was it black or was the Game Boy Pocket black and white? I don't. It was still black and white. The color came out a little bit later. But I I had the pocket and I had the link cable and my neighbor Keith and I shout out Keith. Uh, we would link up and play link games together whoa all summer god you know that's so that you played it an extended period of time two player i feel like i did it once i had had a friend named robert and he had a game boy and he was very insistent that i get nba all-star challenge 2 on the game boy because he wanted to play one-on-one and i did get it and we played it once together and that was it so i was just stuck with the because as a kid like you got to really you got to really cherish the games that you're given. Yeah. And so I played it a lot, even though I never would have asked for a basketball game on my own. And I guess my mother assumed I liked basketball because then <laughs> she also got me NBA All-Star Challenge on the Genesis, <laughs> which, which I mean, would be amusing. I would play it and try to break the rules because it's it's like, oh, if you jump and don't try to shoot, it's traveling. And you're like, okay, basketball, right? You're meant to dribble. You can't just. <laughs> and so I'd be like, oh, the traveling. Yeah. It would. It had compressed vocals. It looked funny. I'm getting a little off topic, but um, I think maybe we did Tetris once as well on the game and the game. So what? What were your linked games of choice? Do you remember? I think the the one we played the most was the original Pokemon games, like Red and Blue, and okay. you had to link to battle, and you had to link to be able to catch them all, so to speak. So this is like 1998. We are in seventh grade and we are just on the edge of like, okay, we could play this game, but we can't talk about it at school because it's like <laughs> not cool. Right, right, right. But if you like, you could distinguish yourself like, no, I, I, I play the game. The game is cool. I don't watch the cartoon. The cartoon is for <laughs> right. little kids, but the yeah. real cool dudes, right. uh, we play the game for... Right. You know, it's it's uh it's educational. Like, look at all this <laughs> nature. That the game at. Pikachu says "fuck," so it's fine. Yeah, it's just one of the many art forms that I'm capable of appreciating. And if you <laughs> can't appreciate the art form of Pokemon Red and Pokemon Blue mm-hmm. on the advanced LCD screen of the Game Boy Pocket, where the form factor is so much better than the original Game Boy, then that's on you, my friend. <laughs> yeah, this is totally different from all those other Pokemon fans. What there's what Mew? Huh? What? How? Do you... Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's like sniffing a fine Merlot. <laughs> yes, that's what I think. I'm in sixth grade. I go to a museum and I think, hmm, Renaissance, not my favorite. Yeah. And then I play Pokemon Red, and I think, <laughs> uh-huh. it's a dry yes. red. <laughs> it's a dry red. 
uh, yeah, Game Boy honestly, genuinely is a very cool console. It's super, super cool. It's the Game Boy Advance, kind of cool, super cool. DS also, all really all of the Nintendo, really any handheld, I think, and the Switch being the ultimate handheld, or or perhaps the Steam Deck, but I would say the Switch is the coolest. Yeah, uh, Nintendo has always been cool with handhelds, even in when all the other companies were like, but look, we. You know, Sega pushed it. They're like, we got a color screen. It's the Game Gear. It's black. It looks modern. The Game Boy was gray. The original one was a brick. It was clunky. But it, I guess it just didn't matter. I guess because maybe one thing, I guess it would have been contradictory. And this is why Sega would have never tried to advertise it this way. But the Game Boy did appeal to adults. Right. And yeah. if mm-hmm. and like it was there were a lot of businessmen and women who would just play Tetris all day. If Sega was like, hey, you know, the Genesis, we're going to target it towards teens, but that's also targeting it towards kids because, hey, if you're eight, you want right. what your 14 year old brother has. But there's there is always that division like, oh, yeah, kids think teens are cool and teens think adults are lame. Right. So if they had tried to market the Game Gears like the ultimate teen system because the Game Boy is for adults and adults are boring. I know they went with like, oh, it's it's black and white or green and black. Like, it, who wants to play that? This is in color. But they never, I don't think they ever tried to push like the Game Boys for adults and adults are lame. Don't buy a that, Game Boy. They just went with the Game Boys lame full stop. I can't remember what the magazine yeah. was, but it had, it, it was like, here's some things you can do with your Game Boy after you get your Game Gear and you want to get rid of it. <laughs> and one, the, the really memorable one was, um, I think the the caption was butt scrubber, and so they had taken <laughs> they had taken the innards out of the Game Boy and put like a soap pump into the Game Boy, and then so you could you could clean yourself with wow. the soap that you've pumped out of the Game Boy that you've disassembled because you don't need it anymore because you've got <laughs> you went through like, that's going through a lot of effort. I'm not, I'm not going to Google that, but if somebody <laughs> if wants somebody to find will... that pa- page and send it to me, I'll be appreciative. Wow. Well, uh, the Game Boy, I, I think the Game Boy Advance SP. Yeah. When it, when it could fold is probably the coolest version of just Game Boy. There was something because as a kid, I had the original. And then I didn't get another one until the SP. I like skipped. I skipped the color entirely, I guess, because I had a Game Boy and a Game Gear and the Game Gear had Sonic. Right. But uh, yeah, yeah. The Nomad always seemed so cool to me, though. I never saw one in real life. I don't think I saw one at a store once. And if they'd come out with that earlier. Yeah, that could have been a real contender, like the whole Genesis library. Yeah, not quite in your pocket. It's too big for your pocket. In your sweatshirt pocket. Yeah, that's cool as shit. <laughs> yeah. Although you know what, I think the CDX was probably cooler than the Nomad. I never had either, but to me, no, the CDX because it's a it was a Genesis and a Sega CD as one, and it's just this sort of block. And I'm like, that looks cool. I think it even had batteries. Like you could technically have it be portable if you wanted to just listen to music CDs. <laughs> that seemed really cool to me as a kid. Um, I don't know if it really would have been cool though, but it seemed cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it had X in the title too. Like, mm-hmm. you can't get much cooler than that. Thinking about how cool the Genesis mm-hmm. must have seemed at the time, because it was different looking, right? Like the Nintendo was gray the Nintendo Entertainment System. So, But anyway, for the Genesis to be like this sleek, it's cool, it's black, it's got a headphone jack. Mm-hmm. It's like different than the Super Nintendo, which is purple and gray and not even out yet. Yeah, yeah and I think it's just like the fact that it was a little more rare made it like, oh man, we're going to Jeremy's house. Jeremy's got a Sega. <laughs> and like, okay, that's cool. We're not playing Mario Kart. We're playing Streets of Rage. That one was for sure the teen console. Yeah. It was the older mm-hmm. teen dickhead <laughs> who had it. And you were like, oh, he must know what's up. That guy knows what's going on. The neighbor or the cousin or the friend of the friend of mm-hmm. like, but somehow it gets introduced to you. And then you're like, they know. They know what's cool. He's got Booger Man. He's rude. Oh, God. He's got Booger Man. I have Booger Man. <laughs> 
have you beaten booger man (laughs) (laughs) i have not beaten booger man i have I, I want I bought a, a gaming magazine because it had Sonic on the cover and it came with free stickers and those stickers were Boogerman stickers that you're meant to put on your Sega Genesis controller. Mm. I never applied them mm. because the idea of putting stickers on my Genesis controller just seemed sacrilege. But also, yeah, who wants to be the one holding the Boogerman controller? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You don't know where it's been. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, you know it's it's funny the Super Nintendo has the purple on it mm-hmm. and purple buttons even though in japan it's primary colors right like it's red right. and, and super famicom right i don't know why they decided that the the primary colors i guess were maybe too childish but mauve is fine I yeah know. i guess maybe maybe that was the thinking of like oh maybe it's it seems like preschool seems like maybe i don't know like i i don't understand because if you look at it with your eyes, it looks better. Like, it looks cool. Well, the colors make it pop. Yeah. The Super Nintendo is easy to appreciate now, but I think um, it was also kind of like the adults and kids console, because it was like Super Mario Kart is like, oh, yeah, that's the one that mom wants to play with the kid. Little but Timmy. That's not true of Streets of Rage. <laughs> right. Mom doesn't want to play Streets of Rage. That's because mom's lame. <laughs> yeah. Right. Genesis was definitely the cool one i think it also just had like weirder games too like there's yeah. no michael jackson moonwalker for snes is there good point <laughs> not that i know of no yeah that's all sega that's a sega game they made it yeah wow but and there's no like equivalent you're like no okay well the michael jackson of the snes is x there's just, there is no x there yeah uh. yeah but they did have Mega Man X, which the Genesis didn't have. <laughs> that was definitely one of the games that you would see at your friend's house and be kind of jealous of that it wasn't on Genesis. Yeah. But then you would remember that you had blood in Mortal Kombat that, and it would be fine. Yeah. Yeah, that is the unfortunate thing. It was just the lack of, of Mega Man, I feel, is one of the big ones. Even though, well, they could have released Wily Wars physically. They didn't. The Sega Channel exclusive. But oh, see, the, the Genesis is cool because if you had a cable subscription, you could also get a Sega subscription. What does the Super Nintendo have? I, I mean, I guess they had the Mario su- Paint. You could, you, could, they had Mar- you could get TV on your Game Gear, too. We're just miles <gasps> ahead over on the Sega. I know. That's Sega uh, space. I, I really. TV tuner. I really wanted a TV tuner. Me too. <laughs> Me too. When I would say. When did the Genesis become uncool? Because it had a few moments where it arguably jumped the shark. A couple of like the big ones would be the 32X, maybe Sonic 3D Blast. Yeah, well, I mean, I got into it. I don't think I got my Genesis until probably early 97. You know, I was a Game Gear guy. Yeah. Playing all the, the mobile game, or we didn't call it mobile <laughs> in those days, but we would now. Right. But then I got the Model 2 Genesis and just like a ton of games were really cheap. So they were re- reissuing stuff. They were putting out compilations. I got the six pack with Golden Axe and Shinobi and Sonic One and mm-hmm. Columns. God. Yeah. Yeah. You could, mm-hmm. you could clean up on a budget 1997. Yeah. yeah. It's true. Yeah. Getting those at like garage sales. I remember that. I, or like, I remember also there were a couple games that we got because we just sort of rented them from a video store and then that video store would go out of business or. You just would never return it, I think. Like somehow that yeah. happened or like <laughs> it was your friends, but then he left it at your house and then you're like meant to give it back. And you did eventually give it back. But for a while, you just had Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle and Tiny Toons. Uh, that was for NES. And then Tiny Toons Sports All-Stars on the Genesis, which ended up being a huge favorite at our house. <laughs> There's a couple of decent Tiny Toons games, weirdly. Yeah. Like somehow that worked as a license. Right. I mean, is is it the fact that the Genesis ever stopped being cool or was it just Sega as a concept wasn't as cool? Because like, well, I mean, Bo, you, you got the Genesis real late when you told kids at school, I have a Genesis now. Did they go that's lame or were they like, well, why don't you have a PlayStation or were they just like, no, I think I don't like where I lived. We're really technology forward. I feel like it kind of went from like 16 bit straight into ps2 for like most people mm, okay the only person in the state probably who had a saturn uh but there was like a core group of kids who had 
Genesis. Okay. Right. I'm I'm just trying to think because I had a Genesis and Genesis seemed to be the cool one, even though there were the, you know, the schoolyard fights. But then eventually, like once the PlayStation, I feel like it really was around the time Final Fantasy VII came out. Yeah. That suddenly everyone went, this is the cool one. And the Saturn is definitely not cool. So Sega is no longer cool. And there's no Sonic. So Sonic's not cool. Like that, that was really the shift, even though I'd still argue that the Saturn is way cooler than the playstation but did you get a saturn when it was new i think i've told this story on the podcast i won a saturn in a sega.com contest oh. for sonic jam oh yeah that's right and, that's right yeah. how could i forget and, well technically i won five or six saturn games but i didn't have a saturn and then i traded some of the games for a saturn but yeah <laughs> it must have been really confused with gibbon yeah with gibbon that's right, right. Oh right, that's what it was. Right, it was a contest. Weren't you given a moniker? Or was it? That's right. Right, uh, Sonic Jam Museum Curator. Right, was the title <laughs> given to the winners of the contest because to win the contest you had to answer Sonic trivia. And I don't, I don't remember the questions. They're not on archive.org, but the the winner's announcement is. So uh, and there you if are. You want <laughs> my name and my hometown as of <laughs> 1997. <laughs> Wow. You can find it on wow. Sega.com. Archive.org. I always forget that you were a whiz kid. You've had this, like, I don't mean it in that you're like this character, but you've had a Forrest Gump like journey through Sega <laughs> where you've just like, tra- you've done all these impossible, I don't know. Right. Not only are all of these Sega blogs covering you, but they've been covering you since there were Sega blogs. <laughs> right. Well, it's true. I've been manipulating yeah. history right because if you're the sonic jam museum curator then like it makes perfect sense why suddenly you're in charge of the saturn as a whole that's right yeah like i came back after a long absence and i thought what do you guys do in this place is a mess let's clean this up <laughs> <laughs> there's cheat codes you haven't found yet oh man there's demo discs you haven't analyzed yet i guess then i don't know i still don't know anyone who bought a Saturn <laughs> at or around launch? Oh no, because it was so expensive. That was the major thing. It was it was like mm-hmm. six hundred bucks or something. I forget what it actually was. It, it was uh, four hundred and ninety four dollars, which is like four hundred thousand and twenty twenty four dollars. Right, and then the PlayStation was a hundred bucks cheaper. And, yeah, uh... I love Clockwork Night, but if you're a cool dude in nineteen ninety five, mm-hmm. you're looking at that and you're like. I don't know, man. Twisted Metal looks cooler than this magical toy kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> uh, God, it's so unfortunate. Uh, Shout out Clockwork Night fans. I know you're listening. <laughs> Hi, Clockwork Night fans. It's nice to be uh, in-laws. We both know Bo. <laughs> so it's nice to see you here, Clockwork Night fans. I'm not personally, I have nothing against Clockwork Night. I've just never played it. I don't have a Saturn. It's not on the GameCube, so you can't play it there. It's not on the GameCube. Saturn is still actually it's not as expensive as I thought. It's about it's a reasonable price for a new console. Yeah, you can get a Saturn. There's certain games that are crazy, but yeah. Yeah. That's true of GameCube, true of Dreamcast, true of Yeah. Yeah. Like, hey, you want <laughs> you you want Burning Rangers? You're gonna have to mortgage your house. <laughs> Yeah, Any, anything from 98. Yeah, Burning Rangers, Panzer Dragoon. Right. Oh, man, I really wish, because I got a Saturn Christmas 96, so I did have it at the time where it was relevant. And I did that because I wanted Sonic, but they never really delivered on Sonic. You get the one and you're done. So there are some games I have where I know they're ex- sort of expensive now, but for whatever reason, 98 just completely passed me by. Didn't get Burning Rangers. Didn't get Panzer Dragon Saga. And I kept on thinking, oh, I should get these. I should get these. But I'm a child. Uh, And then, uh, yeah, become an adult. Then you don't get it. And then you see the prices go up and you don't get it. And then you go, well, hey, at least I got Bug. (laughs) (laughs) That's something. Yeah. But not Bug 2, which I guess is more expensive. Uh, and I have Clockwork Night, but not Clockwork Night 2, which I guess is more expensive. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, hey, the Saturn looks cool physically. I still think it looks cooler. At least, what, the second version? There's there's two models of the Saturn that were released in the West. Yeah, there's some pretty cool Saturns. I don't think the coolest ones came out in 
U.S. No, the the white one in Japan looked really cool. I was like, yeah, they should have they should have released that one over here because you, you talk about you know I brought up the the GameCube colors. I I think because it was originally just in purple and that probably really led into the hey it's Kitty. Yeah, and I and like this is for children and you're a child because purple. I don't know why purple is kid color. It's a royal color. It was important in the nineties mm-hmm. to distinguish yourself from the kids. So yeah, like the, the Pokemon game versus cartoon. That that's an example. But you can't overstate how lame you had to say Barney was in the nineties. Yeah, right. You had to hate Barney because he was purple and a dinosaur for, and for your little siblings totally it's true there's no easier way to just be like i'm not a cop than being like hey guys we all agree that barney sucks and be like, yeah all right we have right. we have that in common at least so right continue with your yes i got a gamecube after when when they finally introduced other colors i got a black gamecube and i thought that was cool like oh black is cool and the handle's neat, but I don't know if the handle made it cool, but it kind of is cool, like now looking back on the handle, but I think the handle at the time people thought was silly. Because what does that mean? You're going to carry it somewhere? You... <laughs> was there a, a GameCube link cable? A link? Uh, I, th- I think there was. I think you could link some GameCubes together. I just... There's a Saturn link cable, the Tyson cable. It didn't come out of the West, and <laughs> you can imagine lugging your saturn <laughs> over to somebody's house and your tv because you needed separate tvs right and you could play uh, maybe fewer than 12 maybe six games right. on on the link cable yeah. hyper revertheon anybody <laughs> jeppikers <laughs> anybody play jeppikers god bless you is, it, is that jeopardy i'm familiar with alex trebek's jeopardy is that <laughs> there's somebody out there who's Older brother had Jeppikers and they played it and I'm going to make him very happy someday. <laughs> Coolest consoles, least cool consoles. Coolest to me, I think I'm going to go with Sega CD, even though I never had one. But if I had seen one that, oh shit, that's a Genesis. That's pretty cool by itself. And what's that on top of it? It plays discs. Yeah. And you've got I like an FMV game that like looks way cooler than it is to play. I think that would be like p cool for me and least cool i'm gonna say playstation 3 because it's like the size of a small car (laughs) and all the ones i knew of that people had like developed like terrible disk drive problems in like the third month that they had them i know that's more of like an xbox 360 problem right the The ring of death yeah Yeah. i've also gone through a lot of dreamcasts too i've also i've noticed too on ebay you can find quite a few Dreamcast for sale that don't work. A lot of parts for about yeah. fifty bucks. Right. Yeah, could, for parts because the laser disc, I guess, goes out pretty easily. Or you could piece them together, maybe. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I've gone through a few PS3s as well, and and that and the 360 have like a very expansive library. In some ways, I think it's one of the best consoles to have because it has like access to so much. But at the same time, it is an awkward generation i think kind of but at the same time it also feels like one of the uh, i don't know gamecube man they used to make cubes that were just for games and that's i like that about switch it's just for games and youtube gamecube i like the point you made about it's just for games like the Saturn, they wanted it to be an internet thing. Mm-hmm. And the net length the dreamcast they definitely wanted it to be an internet thing they also wanted it to be like you can run a screensaver for your office. Here's your vir- virtual fish tank and stuff. Yeah. And then the PlayStation 3 was the Blu-ray player, right? What, was it Was it the 360 that had the uh, HD DVD attachment? Yeah, that's right. Yes. I had a friend, a friend who was all in on HD DVD as a format. And then oh. like everybody announced like, okay, we're abandoning it. Abandoning it. <laughs> and then he bought every HD DVD you could get and he he, his plan was like okay well i'm just going to be set for you know 15 years i can watch all these movies just spool them out shout out david other david (laughs) okay hi other david david too Uh, (laughs) well i mean yeah they did go super cheap you could clean up but like you never buy a new movie 
Let's hope you never want to see anything else ever. I mean, I think it's because HD DVD was red and Blu-ray was blue and blue is a cooler color. They they needed a, like different marketing mm. and, and a different color. And I think that's they could have gone up against. And yet Sony Pepsi, the blue one uh-huh. is number two to Coca-Cola, the red one. Oh, that's because coca-cola tastes better it's true i don't like either one but of the two bad things the coke is better (laughs) right the only the only good soda is of course mountain dew baja blast (laughs) available at all taco bell locations and during its 20th anniversary is now available all year round at your local grocer 20th anniversary that's right 20 years of baja (laughs) wow so it, it was it 20 years 2004 or 20 years 2003 2004 this is okay we are in the 20th year see the summer of baja is now forever okay so i I was gonna say and maybe this will undermine it i've been on record probably on this podcast as saying 1999 was the last good year Mm -hmm. but you know i think there's maybe a case to be made for 2003 like as nearly a good year Nearly. But if you're saying Baja Blast was 2004, maybe 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 it was up there too. I think 2005 is where 2004. The wheels came off. 2004 was good, but 2000. When did uh, the last Lord of the Rings come out? When was that? Return of the King. That was 2005. Was that four? I thought that was three. It wasn't 06. Maybe it's 03. It was. Maybe it's 03. 2003. It was 2003. Okay. There you go. Probably on DVD. In 2004. (laughs) And then it's probably on sale with the extended cut in 2005. That's why 2005 is the best year because Uh I've just been playing a lot of games from 2005. Shadow, Star Fox Assault. That's two. I mean, that's that's kind of a lot. That is two. Uh, Do do you want me to just find a list of all GameCube games from 2005? When when did the GameCube kind of start to die off? Because the Wii comes in comes out swinging in 06 right secret secret rings would have come out in 07 that's 07 yeah all right the successor for the gamecube is the wii which was first released november 19th 2006 but it took it took a while for people to get it right it was like chronically sold out yeah it was it was sold out immediately everywhere everyone wanted a wii for some yeah that speaks to the power of marketing and the power of because nobody cared about the gamecube like the ps2 was just yeah that's what and nobody wanted the GameCube. Xbox was sort of middling. Uh, in, in the West, at least I know in Japan, like nobody bought an Xbox because why would you? Um, the phenomenon of everyone wanting a Wii mm-hmm. speaks to how boring and uncool the PS2 is because everyone's like, well, I got to have it for the DVDs. And, I, and then it's like, I guess for the games, what am I playing? Mm hmm. I feel like an idiot playing these games. Ah, video games are for losers. What am I doing? This isn't fun. And then the Wii comes around and it's like, oh, it's fun. Look, you <laughs> wave your arm. You're bowling. You're bowling. It's fun. <laughs> that's true. Well, that's a- another one that appealed to adults. Like for, yeah, yeah. I would say, I don't know, well into the 2010s, you could go to somebody's parents' house and they would have the Wii set up. It's like, yeah, mom does Wii Fit every morning. Uh, yeah at nine o'clock yeah i remember playing wii sports with my grandma and my parents that was pretty fun because what's this old lady doing and she was doing all right playing and it was a, she was having the thrill of her life okay I'm, lo- I'm looking at a list of gamecube games the first one released in 2005 in north america because that's where we are was uh, blah, 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 resident evil 4 are you so that kidding me Boom. Right. So 2005, that kicks off. Right. And then the last game released in 2005 on the GameCube was something called Chaos Field, which was published by Sega. Somebody's (laughs) favorite game. Their brother had it. Yeah. They played it. Mm -hmm. Right. We've got, there's some other things. So how did 2006 kicked off North American GameCube with the Mega Man X collection, which, you know, I guess is neat. Hmm. Yeah, that's good. Right. Then we got Curious George, Ch- Chibi Robo, Sonic Riders. I mean, we're sort of... Ooh, yeah. yeah, 2006 isn't... Chibi Robo. Maybe starting off great. Ice Age 2, The Meltdown. Everyone wanted that one. Yeah. You know, 2005, it starts off strong. We'll, we'll say it ended with a Sega game, technically. <laughs> uh, that's a great thing about GameCube is it feels like it's 
a Sega mm -hmm. Sonic console. There are a lot of Sonic games on it. Actually, I was playing around with Mega Collection mm -hmm. because I wanted to hear the original Sonic 3 songs. And I forgot that that game isn't perfect either. Like... Or also, there's just some things that are annoying. For example, I forgot that like you can't command Tails to like to carry you. You have to do that from the second controller port. Yeah, and of course, in Sonic Origins, that you can just look up and you'll do it. Like in Mania, but that wasn't how it was in the original games. Of course, they also could have changed the copy within the game itself to not be like Knuckles is guarding the Chaos Emeralds of the Floating Island, which include the Master Emerald, but the copy does say that. Even though Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2 had already come out, so why are they? So it takes until Sonic Origins to like really kind of like officially retcon. We don't know what the hell's happening in Sonic 3 Knuckles, and we don't know what the island's called. We don't know if it's Angel Island or the Floating Island. We just know there's an island. There's some emeralds. Right. You figure it out. So that's fun. Yeah. The first level's still called Angel Island Zone. Right, but it has island in the title. You remember the Knuckles map, right? The Archie Knuckles map course, where Angel yeah. Island was an island with, uh, within the floating island. Yeah, which, you know, in retrospect, really confusing. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> so confusing. Way worse than, like, Hydro City versus Hydras. Oh, right. We gotta, we gotta give the Ken Penders update. You know, if anybody hmm. here was interested in pre-ordering the Lara Sue Chronicles beginnings, hoping to get their name in these special thanks, well, yesterday as of, of this recording, which was March 20th, was the final day to pre-order to get your name in the book. So if you haven't done it yet, well, you're not going to see your name in print, just like Aww. the classic find your name in print pages in Archie. However, if you still pre-order, you will be able to have your name in the digital app version, and you will still get a randomly selected Sonic the Hedgehog Archie comic from Ken's archives, one that he personally worked on. And the Lara Sue Chron uh, the Lara Sue print, while well, you know uh, that that's still existing. So hey, if you want that, just to uh, <laughs> confirm, this is yeah. an offer and not a threat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, I'm just saying it exists. Yeah, and if you go to San Diego Comic Con, you will be able to buy a copy from Ken personally if you really want to. All right, watch I'm your just back, saying, everybody. It's Jeez. coming. It's going to be printed, and. It, it's not it's not stopping it's happening oh my god so. <laughs> all right uh well thank you that's good uh okay so wait did we say let's have some semblance of a right what is the coolest console the, the coolest console the coolest console. or what are your what's your top three my, david i feel like it's extremely obvious my top three i feel like have to be the sega ones it's it's the dreamcast the genesis and the saturn which i mean depending on the day the order will vary but like it's to to me those three are the epitome of of cool consoles. Um, I love the GameCube. I love other things. I have a I had a lot of systems because I'm like, what what video game systems do I have? Yeah, I don't really have new ones. I've got the Switch. That's the newest thing I have. But like, completely skipped out on some eras. Like the last generation of consoles, never got an Xbox One or a PS4 or a, a Wii U. Just completely skipped it. <laughs> yeah. So maybe those are the lamest ones, are those three. <laughs> I I have had an Xbox, I've had a few PlayStations, but yeah, I just kind of feel like mm -hmm. they don't seem as cool to me overall no. as the Sega and Nintendo ones. And Bo, you said, did you say yours? I guess I kind of zagged and I said Game Boy Pocket because nobody else is going to mention the Game Boy Pocket. But yeah, like in my heart of hearts, in the moment, coolest for me was Game Gear. Genesis Dreamcast. And in my later period, I've come to appreciate the Saturn. Yeah. Very good. All right. What is your favorite console, dear listener? Let us know on YouTube in the comments or email us sonicpodcastweekly at gmail.com. But don't take it from me. <laughs> take it with the correct email address sonicweeklypodcast at gmail.com. Oh, yeah. What did I say? <laughs> he said Sonic Podcast Weekly. Shit. We should get that one too. <laughs> we should. It helped cover all our bases. Yeah. That's right. Maybe we'll register it before this episode comes out because otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> or we'll just scrub it out. Or we won't scrub it out and you'll just know. That's to right. Not email that podcast. To not email. E yeah. But you know what? No matter what you email, what, what you use to email, what email address you'll send it out to, either way, we know that you've listened to another episode 
of Sonic Weekly. That's that's right, the podcast with the most happening sonical suggestions of all time or something. I don't know. Hey, if you like this, maybe what you should do is, of course, uh, subscribe to this podcast. You can do it, of course, on your podcatcher of choice, be it Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podcast Addict, the open source for all your open source needs. Uh, But if you don't want to mess with any of those podcast apps, there is, as Grant mentioned, the YouTube channel, which is, of course, uh, at Sonic-Weekly. Don't forget the at and don't forget the dash. (laughs) Otherwise, you'll go somewhere else. You can subscribe there. You can leave comments. Uh, I was just typing in to see, hey, what what's this? Whoa, there are two comments on our latest episode, which was with uh, Barry uh, from Sega Bits. Let's see what I'm just going to read them. It says, dang, that Barry guy sure sounds handsome as Frick, whoever he is. <laughs> I wonder who wrote this. Uh, also sounds like a guy that would make a really cool Sonic SpaghettiOs themed coffee mug. OK, and then we got another one from jerry xp gaming who said finally here from apple podcast to see some good sonic shuffle gameplay and that's right all of our youtube videos do have gameplay from uh jack of old games he's the one who get who puts together those videos for us so hey you want to listen have something in the background see some video go ahead let's do that and hey if you want to talk to us there is the email address sonicweeklypodcast at gmail.com there's our discord server send us an email ask for the link you'll get in there and you'll talk to some like-minded sonic the hedgehog fans and hey it's not just about sonic we talk sega there we we talk we talk saturn which is also sega we talk... <laughs> we'll talk swagman if you want we'll talk yeah just at us say at swagman i I'd actually i don't know who's in there uh there's the twitter sonic weekly it technically exists of course we gotta thank Smoothies for the edit. He's the one that pieces this together and makes it listenable. Thank you, Smoothies. Thank you. Thank you, listeners. Thank you, Bo, for keeping the Saturn alive. And thank you, Grant, for bringing us all together. Thank you, David. Thanks, David. 